it's time for the Security Token Show. We're here to bring you the latest and greatest in security token news. Coming from across the globe to your living room. And delivering all the latest STOs and getting you up to date on what's happening in the market. So what are you waiting for? Let's get on with the show. Welcome back to the Security Token Show. We're here in sunny Miami, Florida. I'm your host, Sir Rick Coding. Sorry I missed you last week, but unfortunately, Kyle is not going to be here this week. We get to have Jason Barraza once again. This is great to have you here, man. I, I think this is the first time we're doing the show together. Always a fantastic time hosting the show as a guest and whatnot. You're right. It is our first time together. Should go as smooth as butter. Uh, we have an exciting plethora of news to cover this oh, week. Yeah. And our main topic, which is Wisdom Tree Prime's new app. But before we jump into any of that, we do want to thank our sponsor this week, Invest Ready. They are a leading investor accreditation software company, very API friendly, powering issuances all around the world. And we do have a, uh, a webinar coming up with them on compliance for the STA Success Network. This is this coming Thursday, the 27th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you join us for that. And a lot of quality premium programming. I know you're behind a lot of that over at the STA Success Network. It's only available for you for $9 a month. You get access to that, an exclusive newsletter, and a whole lot more. Hope to see you in there. But for now, let's get into the show, Jason. Let's jump in. All right, well, jumping into our top five, we have at number five, the Financial Stability Board and the Committee for uh, Payments and Market Infrastructure. So starting with the Financial Stability Board, they are exploring tokenized assets, specifically tokenized payments. And so right now they have current and planned asset tokenized projects going on, really seeing if the policy has any implications for the SVB committee to review in the future. This includes identifying issues that have to do with uh, uh, excuse me, uh, compliance and other regulatory implications. On the other side, we do have the CPMI, right? The Committee for Payments and Market Infrastructure. They're focused on exploring the benefits, risks, and challenges of central banks uh, around the world and, and really as it relates to tokenized ecosystems. Two major global bodies there representing major uh, countries. Uh, There's going to be lots of implications and learnings to get from that, I think. Moving on to number four, we heard an announcer from WorldVest, uh, which has been in the game since their original issuance in 2017 for Mineral Coin, which is backed by iron, gold, bauxite, and other precious metals. And now they've announced that they're officially minting on the BSV blockchain. That's the first security token, as far as I know, on the BSV protocol. And they're using tokenized in order to be able to do that. A nice uh, new string of uh, uh, protocols as well as platform players here. This is really cool. Congratulations to WorldFast on this major move. Absolutely. This security token is going to be uh, backed by the earnings from mineral production royalties, right? And so this is going to be very uh, interesting to see, especially as it relates to Ghanaian and West Africa. So fantastic uh, news coming from Gary Krause and the team over there at WorldVest. Now, moving into number three, we do have Coindesk, which as reported by Axios, has a deal coming for $125 million. This is from an investor group really led by Matthew Rosak's Tally Capital and Peter Vetsness's uh, Capital Six. So really interesting. Maybe we dive into a little bit of the history here, right? D, uh, you know, DCG uh, invested for $2 million at, at seed level round. Uh, and they're going to keep a stake here in their media events, data, and indices businesses. But wow, this is an interesting... Uh, yeah, the you know, D digital currency group has been going through a tough time. I think yeah. as of late, they were rumored to be doing uh, almost a $200 million sale earlier this year around Coindesk. I guess this is where it's settled. Moving on to number two, we've got big news out of INX. Yet another listing on the secondary market for a pretty well-known name in the crypto industry, Casper Labs. Uh, very big news. We expect this in September of 2023. Uh, no, no much further details are mentioned, but given the both uh, impact uh, that Casper has had in the blockchain uh, industry, as well as the fact that it's INX bringing in that tokenization capability, 
It's a beautiful merger of worlds here. It's big, big news for the industry. Absolutely. And INX, I think it's number eight in the last 12 months. So you guys are pumping out security token offerings and we're here to cover it all. But moving into number one, Sockchain Subsidiaries SG Forge just got their first French crypto license as a service provider. So this new digital asset service provider, DASP license, allows them to be able to uh, enhance security and uh, tradability and compliance. So that kind of, you know, gives them that level of certainty for people involved. Now, in terms of, you know, how many assets they're managing and whatnot, they will classify as a class one or class two uh, service provider, meaning that they can manage portfolios, offer investment advice. Um, and if they do hit class two, then also custody these assets. They are not class three, though, which means we won't expect any trading uh, anytime soon. But this is a major, major milestone. Congratulations to Sockgen's Forge Group. That's amazing stuff. With that, let's head over to Peter Gaffney and get the institutional update. All right. Welcome back to the institutional segment of the show. I'm Peter Gaffney, head of research at Security Token Advisors. Unfortunate news that NASDAQ put a little halt to its crypto custody plan, citing, as one could imagine, the unclear regulatory landscape driven by the recent XRP and Coinbase backdrops. Quick gut punch to the digital assets industry as a whole. Although remember, we still have BNY Mellon moving forward with its Bitcoin and Ether custody support and State Street splitting ties with Copper earlier this year, actually, in favor of developing its own in-house and digital assets custody services. State Street already custodies $40 trillion across 100 different markets. BNY Mellon, $43 trillion itself with its 238-year track record. A couple absurd stats, if we are being real. So the Nasdaq news is not great, but certainly isn't the end for institutional confidence and readily available partners. Additionally, I do want to give a quick nod to Coinbase and some of their specific efforts when it comes to the recent launch of Base, the company's open source layer to blockchain. So back in March, Coinbase rolled out its wallet as a service to streamline institutional and asset management accounts, essentially acting as a scaling framework for, let's call it, you know, millions of accounts behind different brokers, RAs, investment managers, and different groups like that. Wallet as a service is intended for the big players, bring in the big weight. So the Coinbase team is also pretty prepared to work with global financial institutions on the tokenization front, specifically tokenization, with a robust package through BASE. In my eyes, you know, Avalanche, Providence Blockchain, Polygon, even Stellar are leading the pack in terms of asset tokenization activity, like we show in many of our reports. Uh, especially Avalanche secured another member in its Spruce subnet, this one being Damani Protocol, who works with Deutsche Bank on digital funds. Congrats, Avalanche. Uh, and provenance with its permissioning capabilities. It's all getting there on the Ethereum front with layer two and add-on solutions. That's really an area that BASE aims to tap into as an EPM compatible solution, you know, managing any permissioning actually at the application level rather than at the chain level. Pretty, pretty cool on this case. Uh, so from our advisory conversation, specifically institutions are either looking to build their own solutions or work with firms who really have achieved that critical mass. So Coinbase is certainly in that latter category, as we know, on the crypto side, and could even be seen as a future apex predator in the tokenization space specific. Now, there's just a few things that caught my eye this past week. Not a tremendous amount of updates on the product side. Herwig and Jason did a nice job breaking down the key headlines and approvals this week on that front. But we still have our market updates in store with Nick Steffen. Coming up right now. Hello and welcome to the market update. The security token market cap has dipped down this week to $16.47 billion. While no individual names have had noteworthy gains this week, it is important to touch upon the growth of the INX token, which has gained over 150% on the month. This is a strong sign because while the macro market has seen massive inflows, trustworthy names are gaining steam. Up next, XRP, has attracted significant interest following Annalisa Torres' ruling that it is not a security. Notably, Link2 COO Joseph Endozo revealed how the company plans to utilize XRP in the upcoming Link2 2.0. In an interview with Thinking Crypto's Tony Edward, Endozo disclosed that Link2 is working on a tokenized private equity proof of concept, which will use XRP as the only payment method. According to Endozo, the pilot project will see Link2 set up a special purpose vehicle or SPV, 
Notably, this SPV will be firewalled from the rest of Link 2's other SPVs and main database. It will be extremely interesting to track how the developments in the aftermath of the Ripple ruling, while there will certainly be more legal battles to follow, will this initial decision set the framework for incorporating more cryptocurrencies into the mainstream trading vehicle? The initial thought is yes, as legitimacy will pour in, but as always, that remains to be seen. Well, that's all for now. Have an amazing rest of your week. Well, thank you, Nick, for that uh, amazing market update. Always like to see you for I'm not just behind the camera, but in front of it too. And with that, it's time for our main topic. Some big news came out that you guys covered last week. I haven't had a chance to bring in my input, so I really wanted to make that our main topic today. Wisdom Tree, a asset manager with over 90 billion and Assets Under Management has officially announced their Prime app, Wisdom Tree Prime. Wow, a multi-billion dollar asset manager coming out with its own app that is natively blockchain, which actually uh, the CEO has said that is actually a being native to the blockchain, a great differentiating advantage uh, for the future to come. We're going to dive right into that. Uh, this is a great topic. What do you think about all this? I think it's really exciting. I mean, it's, it's something that's going to really talk to the masses in terms of the easeability of you know, investing into blockchain native assets, right? These digital funds that they've been approved for that we've mentioned time and time again, uh, huge news for the industry. But again, as we like to say in the past, it's a Web2 front end with Web3 back end. So it's a very great way to get investors, new and already invested ones into this ecosystem. That's, we're going to now break down exactly what those benefits are of being Web3 back end. But first, I want to give a little history of how Wisdom Tree got there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the company really has been doing ETFs only for about 20 years uh, since it was taken over by a group in 2005. A year later, they had launched 20 ETFs. Today, I think they have over 90. Um, but you know, fast forward to 2020, we saw a $17.5 million investment into Securency, which was a known, obviously, tokenization provider and solution in the space. But our first uh, foray that we saw from Wisdom Tree into doing anything blockchain. Now, 2021, they actually filed their first open-ended fund. It was uh, under the Investment Act of 1940. Anyone will be able to trade this. That's their business. It's what they do with the WTSY fund, which is basically a blockchain-enabled digital short-term treasury fund. Uh, this was, of course, very novel just a few years ago. Uh, and last year, we found out they announced that they had gotten approval for it. Uh, and at the beginning of last year, they even hinted to the world that they are planning to launch an app in order to enable access for their audience, for their investors directly into these new digitally enabled funds that we're talking about. They haven't stopped there because we saw later in 2022 that they got FINRA approval uh, for their Wisdom Tree Securities, which is essentially the license that they need in order to enable people to purchase into their blockchain enabled funds via their own app, right? And then finally, just this year, we saw that they approved, uh, they got approval for nine more funds. That's 10 now blockchain digitally enhanced funds uh, that they plan to bring to the app, which we of course covered last week on the show. Went live, nine out of 10 of them are available as I understand it. And they're available in 21 states. Naturally, sounds like the broker hasn't gotten the the registrations across the board yet. I'm sure that's coming because we're on a wait list here in Florida. Uh, so we did not make the cut, but that's incredible, Jason. They now have gone from product to getting approval, to getting the licenses that they need, and to getting an app. That's fantastic. It's, it's, it's a great story over the last couple of years, which um, as we've seen, things always you know get faster and faster over time in terms of execution. So that's fantastic for Wisdom Tree. Let's jump into the benefits. You know, why did they do that? Why does this matter, right? Uh, first and foremost, as we have mentioned, it's blockchain native, right? So this means that you're going to have instant transfers, instant settlement for these uh, different funds. People can participate in them. But in a way, as I mentioned before, that is a little bit more retail or really just friendly for anyone that's not Web3 native, right? That being said, they're not excluding the Web3 native people either. You can trade Bitcoin and Ethereum on Wisdom Tree Prime as well. So it's a great way to kind of converge the traditional people, the Web3 people all into one app and be able to interact with each other's views, if you will. Um, now, that being said, they don't have to rely on other third parties for some of these, right? As we saw on Market Screener, uh, they did buy the currency transfers, right? Which is part of this whole 
situation here. So that means, again, as I earlier mentioned, the uh, uh, instant settlement and instant tra- transfers of these funds. Now, ETFs, why do those matter, right? And Wisdom Tree is very well known for their ETF products. Why do those matter? Because people that maybe don't want to like pick and choose different stocks and whatnot, they kind of want just general exposure. There's a great way to get exposure into general funds that kind of give you that upside without needing to watch it every single day, right? Or know that much of what they're messing into, right? So this is fantastic news. And in terms of the licenses, well, they have what they're calling a compliance forward approach, right? They made sure to get these licenses. These are working with regulators to make sure they're compliant. They're staying uh, good on, on their uh, check marks here. So that's fantastic news. So all these benefits all in coupled into one app is fantastic. And we do, by the way, have a webinar coming up with Securency on the SDA Success Network this coming, uh, or excuse me, on July 26th at 1 p.m. So definitely check that out and we'll get their inside scoop as well as what their involvement was with Wisdom Tree Prime. That's right. They are, Securency is powering, uh, you know, presumably the app behind that here, enabling the tokenization to occur. And as you pointed out, they've built their own ecosystem in order to be completely digitally native. They even said in one of their articles, quote, you know, ETFs are, you know, the mode of today, but blockchain enabled funds are here tomorrow. So they are getting ready for the future that they see, uh, which we have been preaching for a while, which is why we expect many other providers to also start doing the same. They're going to start building their own apps powered by their own brokerages powered by their own licensing and potentially leveraging, you know, other uh, technology solutions. Uh, they are, they were actually with their WTSY, the treasury fund that I mentioned from 2021. They were the first registered multi-chain blockchain enabled fund. So they have been so forward thinking, they actually trialed it out on Ethereum and Stellar. Uh, so they are clearly figuring out what are the best actual backends from a Web3 perspective. And to your point, they're trying to be open to the ecosystem. I'm sure that they're looking at other uh, blockchain protocols as well, especially those that are gaining more and more popular popularity around tokenization. Uh, but in a macro perspective, Jason, I think you kind of touched on it. The fact that they now have their own app where they can control their own audience, their own investor base, uh, completely coupled with the benefits of automation so that managing all these investors themselves isn't as much of a headache. Uh, of course, those uh, benefits of near instant settlement and transfers uh, are going to come into play here for sure. Uh, and naturally, they now have a venue where they can keep launching more products. They went from one to 10 in basically the course of a year or two. I imagine that number will continue. And the fact that the firm is saying that they believe this is the future, you know, I imagine if they you know, pumped out 70, 80 ETFs in the past, we can expect another 70, 80 over the next several years to also be available exclusively or at least presumably directly via this app, which is just absolutely an entire game changer, I think, for the industry, the way we approach asset management in general. Absolutely. And out of those nine out of the 10 that are approved funds, the one that didn't make it was the Twitter sentiment uh, fund. Being said, you never know when that one jumps into the uh, into the app as well, and when hopefully the other remaining states become available. Because I, for one, definitely want to uh, sign up and experience and really see what this app is all about. So, an absolutely incredible story here for Web three, uh, for tokenization, for a you know rising asset manager that's been known uh, and been cited as one of the best financial uh, you know companies in America. I think this absolutely uh, reinforces that. Uh, So hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, some thoughts, we're always here. We'd love to answer them. We're available on social media. And of course, uh, we now want to get over to our companies of the week. So, All right. And now it's time for our companies of the week. These are two companies that we get to choose every week as the ones that we think are doing the biggest moves uh, in terms of industry and the movements, right? And of course, anyone that gets submitted as a company of the week does get also submitted as a potential contender for the company of the That's year cool. award. So without further ado, Herrick, who's your company of the week? Well, for episode 198, we are rolling up to 200 here. Got to do something exciting for that, I think, Jason. Mm-hmm. But this week, I got to give it to, of course, Wisdom Tree. Uh, I, I, I noticed it wasn't uh, a winner last week. And personally, I believe that what they have done with the Wisdom Tree Prime app uh, is something that's going to be recognized as one of the most forward-thinking moves to have performed in 2023 in the next coming decade. 
Uh, they absolutely should qualify as company of the year for that. Uh, so I just wanted to give them a, a huge shout out and congratulations for all of the years of hard work to get to this stage. They've now gone finally live uh, and we're excited to see the progress and the, you know, what it'll lead to from here on out. Absolutely. I think that's a fantastic pick, Herwig. Fantastic. And congratulations to Wisdom Tree. And what do you got, Jalen? You got I have Casper Labs. As earlier mentioned in our top five section, they are tokenizing their own equity on INX1. That's set to go live in September of this year. So only a couple months out. Uh, really what Casper Labs, I think, is really doing here is they're trying to create enterprise le grade level solutions, right? And they mentioned in some of their press releases are really trying to work with governments who are going to be a lot of the big users for blockchain as well. So fantastic for them. The protocol itself is worth about $400 million right now. So that should be a good indicator as to where they're headed. So congratulations, Casper Labs. Great pick. It's a good merger of the crypto world with tokenization. Uh, this is an absolutely great use case and something that I think INX, the venue behind it, has always been kind of preaching as that kind of bridge. So great listing. I can't wait to see that happen in September. In here. Well, with that, folks, that's our show. Of course, we hope to catch you next week on Monday. We would like to see you at stm.co in the meantime for all of the latest news coming out as well as all of the latest trading data around these different offerings and uh, listings. And of course, you know, uh, check out the STA Success Network. It's our sister company. It's our consulting company. that We've launched a brand new platform with tons of amazing programming, tons of amazing intelligence in there, as well as an incredible community of almost 200 professionals within the security token ecosystem. You can check that out at securitytokenadvisors.com. Uh, and with that, I hope to see you next Monday and happy tokenizing. Happy tokenizing.